Because what would happen is, fine, okay, I'm on my harpsichord here and I'll play. You know, I've got this concert, all these people have come. I'm in some king's court or something. And, you know, in that day and age, maybe they had lots of time on their hand. So they'd play the C major piece in a C major scale. And then they'd say, okay, our next piece is in D major. So we're going to have intermission. Not just for 10 minutes, but for maybe an hour or longer so that they could go and actually retune the instrument to this. So that everything would be retuned in this way, right, for a different, for a different key. And, of course, the possibility you couldn't have a piece that would go from one scale to another in the middle of the piece. It really wouldn't work. So there, there became this need to come up with a different scale. And this is what I want to present is how this actually was done. So now I'm going to um, switch again, I think, because what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to start out with A440. So we're going to switch from C major, D major. We're going to now go to A major here. So I'm going to start out with A440. And what I want to actually do now is I want to go all the way up to A880. And what I'm actually going to do is do something that's very radical. I'm not going to make every note come from the root. What I'm going to do is divide the whole interval, the whole octave, into equal size steps. This is a very different way of doing it. The whole interval into equal size steps. Well, guess what? There are notes that I've actually left out here. These in-between notes that are, you know, the minor second, the minor third, all these other keys that aren't here. And we see them, of course, here. And so if I now count the number of steps, let's do this on the piano keyboard. Let's count the number of steps, and we'll do it mathematically. So I'll take my first step is going from here to here. Okay? So that's, and I'm going to count the little steps, or what you would call half steps. So there's one, two. Between B and C, there's no black key on the piano. So that's going to be one, one, two, three, four. Do you see how I'm doing this? Yeah, if there's a black key, I'll jump to it. Otherwise not. I lost track again, didn't I? Try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So actually the number of steps, or you could say half steps, the number of half steps I'm taking to go from A to A is actually twelve. So what I want to do here is to imagine that there are these 12 steps that I'm going to take. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Did I miss one? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, 11, 12. And what I'm going to do now is make that each step this is where the math becomes a little bit heavier, but we'll be OK. So what I'm going to do here is make sure that each of these little steps are equal. Each step is equal. This is what I'm going to do. So how is that going to work? So let's look at this. What I'm going to do is each time, notice how I did this here, I multiplied by something. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to label this something that I'm multiplying by. I'll just call it r. So I'm going to multiply by r. What is r? r represents how much I'm multiplying by in order to get from any one note to the next note. And all those little steps should be multiplying by the same thing. Another way to look at it is I'm going to increase by the same percentage. Whatever the frequency is, I'm going to go up by maybe it's 8%. Then go up by 8%, go up by 8%. And I'm going to do this the whole way along. Now, how many R's am I going to write here? How many? It should be 12. So what do I know? I now have an equation. I now know that if I start with 440 and I multiply by R, I'm getting tired, that I should get, if these were 12 R's in total, I have 12 of these R's. Shouldn't it be 440 times this, all these R's? It should finally get me to be equal to what? 
where I end up at 880. Well, if you remember a little bit of mathematics from a long time ago, perhaps. Well, how do I write this R 12 times itself? R to the 12th should be equal to 880. Now we're going to solve an equation here. I'm going to divide both sides by 440. Well, that's nice, isn't it? So it actually didn't matter, did it, that we started with A. Could have started anywhere because what I ended up, whatever I started with, I doubled, and that double now is just appeared right there, hasn't it? So I now have r to the 12th equals 2. So it's increasing by a certain percentage. That's a good point. Yeah. So if I start at 440, I'm not going to go up by 10 each time. I go up by slightly more each time, but it's an equal percentage. That's a, that's a fine point, but it's a good one. Did you follow that? It's, not, it, it's kind of like money in a savings account. It's actually very, it's very much the same thing. You're not dividing for the difference, 440 by 12. Right, exactly. So if I, for instance, if I put an account, if I have money in an account, and I'm making 2% interest per year, for instance, I don't make the same amount of dollars every year. That amount that I make actually increases as you go, right? Even though the percentage is the same. Very similar principle. And so in mathematics, I'm going to write down this final thing as r equals the 12th root of 2. And so that's something I can just plug into my calculator, and I get this. The final thing I come up with is r is approximately equal to 1.0595%. What does that mean? It means every step <coughs> increases, it's an increase by, if we drop off the 1, move over the de decimal place by 2, it's an increase of 5, approximately 5.95%. 5.95%. And what have I created? I've now created, and this is the important part here, I've created a musical scale. And it should have all the notes. It defines all the notes from A440 to A880. And it says exactly what those frequencies should be according to this principle, that each step is an increase by the same amount. And so what's happened? I can calculate now each of these notes. What is this B flat right here? That's a B flat, right? OK, good. You know, or A sharp, depending on how you look at it. What is that? How could I calculate that? Well, all I have to do is take this number and multiply by 440, and I now know what that frequency has to be. And once I have that, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to multiply it by this number again. And I'm going to get the next note and the next one. And I keep going all the way down the line for as long as I feel like. Each one of these are half steps, so if I'm going to now if I'm going to now write this out, this one here was, what do I want to call it, B flat or A sharp? What do you? A sharp. OK, A sharp. And then I've got a B. And now I've got C. And then I have C sharp. And then I have D. And then I have D sharp. Do you see? And so to get the B, I'm going to multiply by this R twice. To get to C, I'm going to multiply by R three times. Do you see? So notice what's happened here. We have this. You know, this principle that Pythagoras discovered, as he said, that was given to us by God, and this is what defines these perfect intervals. And now what have we created? We've been created instead another scale, and this scale that we've just invented is the equitempered scale. And all of these notes I can calculate, and guess what we end up with? We end up with notes that are actually, guess what, often a little bit off, a little bit off. So now what happens is, and I'm coming over here now, so let's look at this. If I start at A440, this is what we're beginning with from this table here. 
these are what the ideal notes ought to be. Where do these come from? These are the ideal ratios that we've been talking about all evening. Yes? And so now what I'm doing, if in, instead, is I'm doing it with the equitempered scale. And so what do we end up with? We don't end up with exactly what we want, 495. Instead, I end up with 493.9. Is that terrible? Eh, it's not bad, is it? I, I wonder if anybody could really hear the difference between those two, perhaps. And then I look at the major third. I'm just going to write all these down. See what, this is the equitempered scale. This is nice. Why was that important to be nice? Because it's a fifth. And if we invented a scale that, that where the fifth was way off, that would be really pathetic, don't you think? So yeah, the fifth, we hit the fifth quite nicely. What about the major sixth? What was that? And here with the seventh, how many people really care about the seventh? I don't know. Maybe we do. <laughs> well, I mean, you just look at it and you think the fifth is important, the fourth is important, and somehow, well, so what ends up happening? Now we're going to talk about percent error. How far is it off? And when I write down the percent error, it's how far it is in the off in the direction of the next note. Does that make sense? So if it were 50% off, what would that mean? That means it would be exactly halfway in between two keys on the piano. That would be really weird, wouldn't it? Yeah. So let's see what some of the percent errors are here. 3.8%, 13 13.3%, 1.9%, 1.9%, 15.3%, and 11.4%. So here we have it is with the equitempered scale, we have certain intervals that by definition, if we're just going to tune the piano according to this mathematical scale, if we're going to tune it in that way, we suddenly have certain intervals that, that somebody that is very musical, more so than myself, could hear those differences. We've got something very different. I would say the fifth and the fourth and the major second. Well, the fifth and the fourth, I think you'd be hard pressed to hear the difference. I don't know. I don't know. What is the advantage of the equitempered scale? It's what we were talking about before. I don't have to, I don't have to retune the piano every time that I'm playing a different piece. I don't have to retune the piano. I didn't have I won't run into this problem. So what do I do? Instead of 330 and 334, I'm going to get something that is somewhat in between. Um, and so that's going to bring me, you know, slightly in between of those sort. So the notes, what I've done, it's a bit of a compromise, isn't it? Do you follow? It's a bit of a compromise. If I take the equitempered scale, then what happens is it's convenient. I don't have to retune my instrument, although I, I take it that if someone's doing a piano, piano concerto at Mackey and it's a big concert, the piano tuner will come in and tune it more or less for that specific piece and try to figure out how that's, they're going to have to study it. Yeah, and there will have to be perhaps a little shifting one way or the other for that. Uh, so a piano tuner doesn't, there is a, a there, I think there is an art here for the piano tuner. They're not going to tune the same all the time. And, and I don't know all of the art that actually would involve that. If we have chamber groups playing, for instance, and they're not attached to the piano as opposed to a, a, a piano trio, which has to work with the piano, but if you have a quartet and it's just string instruments, that they may actually play a different interval of third if they're just playing on their own than they would if they were with the piano. Yeah. 